Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. In this video we will be looking at the SIM card, its evolution and the relationship between SIM and UICC. There are different types of SIM cards as you can see in this picture. SIM stands for Subscriber Identity Module. Most people do not know that once upon a time the SIM cards were the size of credit cards. We called them just SIM. Since then, they have evolved to mini, micro and nano SIMs. They are evolving further into embedded SIM or eSIM and integrated SIM or iSIM. Most operators offer multi-SIM cards now because different phones require different sizes. Multi-SIM cards contain a standard micro and nano SIM. If you change phones in the future that require different SIM sizes, you don't need to worry about getting a SIM card. Just use the adapter and you can move between mini, micro and nano SIM cards. This is a slightly technical slide that shows the size and technical names of different SIMs. Mini SIM is called 2FF, where FF stands for form factor. Similarly, micro SIM is 3FF and nano SIM is 4FF. The embedded SIM, which has just been introduced, is MFF2. We will look at eSIM and iSIM in detail shortly. Most people are not aware of the fact that what they call the SIM is actually a tamper-resistant entity called Universal Integrated Circuit Card, or UICC, which is designed to resist software and hardware attacks. Regardless of the packaging used, all SIMs available today are built on these smart cards. Think of the UICC as a very secure computer with memory and different applications that can reside and run on it. Examples shown here are 2G SIM, USIM, and IMS SIM. It should be noted that USIM was initially called UMTS SIM, but then the definition was later changed to Universal SIM to cater for 4G and future generations. The UICC or SIM card for your mobiles are provided by MNOs or MVNOs, and they contain the profile provided by the operator. As a result, you can remove the SIM card from your device, which is generally referred to as UE or ME, and you can change your operator. Your phone number, which is the MS ISDN number, is allocated dynamically by the mobile operator and may not be stored on the SIM card. So even though the field is there, it is often empty. Now it is easy to change the SIM cards from our smartphones and devices, but how do we change SIM cards in the case of millions of IoT devices? We will have to think of a suitable solution. Embedded SIMs or eSIMs are an evolution of the SIM card designed to address the limitations of traditional SIMs. They incorporate new functionality that's needed to enable the world of IoT devices. It is a common mistake to refer to an embedded chip SIM, MFF2, as an eSIM, but that's not always the case. An eSIM can come in all modern form factors, such as 2FF, 3FF, 4FF, and also MFF2. In the rest of this presentation, when we say eSIM, we are specifically referring to MFF2. Now, let's look at what we mean by eSIMs. eSIMs are physical SIM cards that are soldered into the device and enable storage and remote management of multiple network operator profiles. Think of an electronic toy that has this eSIM. When you buy it, the manufacturer decided which operator it connects to. This will be based on their agreement with an operator in the country. They may be selling the same device in multiple countries or allowing roaming between certain countries. The manufacturer will need a way to remotely provision the SIM, so it connects to the right operator in the country. This is one of the most important requirements of eSIM, and even iSIM, that we will look at. The main advantage of eSIMs are seamless global connectivity, thanks to remote provisioning, small size, durable because it's embedded on the circuit board, so less chance of damage or becoming loose, physical security as it's not easy to steal, cost, it's cheaper. The integrated SIM or iSIM moves the SIM from a separate chip into a secure enclave alongside the application processor and cellular radio on a purpose-built system on chip, SOC. Integrated SIM technology builds on EU ICC functionality targeting low power IoT devices. By integrating the processor core and encryption in a system on chip, SOC, 
ICE and technology has benefits in cost, power and security. It should be noted at this point that eSIMs and iSIMs are secure, dedicated physical circuits rather than soft SIMs or software. This is an important distinction because unlike software, secure physical circuits resist advanced hacking. Device manufacturers and network operators can't afford the risks that would be associated with implementing SIMs in software. As a final topic in this presentation, we will briefly look at provisioning. We're going to refer to an article from NTT Docomo Technical Journal. The link is provided in the references. As you can see from figure one, this is the way the standard M2M SIMs work. There is just a single profile associated with the SIM card. In the case of EUICC, because of remote provisioning functions, multiple communication profiles are available. Only one is enabled at any time. You can see in figure two that the MNOA profile is enabled and MNOB profile is disabled. In this example, only two profiles are shown, but there is no specific limit on the number of profiles that can be stored on an EUICC. This depends only on memory available and the size of profiles. When the IoT device is shipped, it only has a provisioning profile. Once it's switched on, it uses this to download the operational profile. The current mobile network operator that the EUICC is connected to maintains a subscription manager that is used to switch profiles. As we can see in the diagram, the EUICC is using MNOA for communications. Now the manufacturer of the IoT device has decided to switch to operator MNOB. MNOA will send the instruction to subscription manager that will in turn send an over the air or OTA instruction to switch to MNOB along with its profile. The EUICC will store the new profile, disable MNOA profile, enable MNOB profile and start communicating with MNOB. Once this connection is successful, MNOB will send a switch completed notification to MNOA. Here are some of the references mentioned and links for further reading. You can download all our slides from our SlideShare channel. We hope you liked this short video on SIM and UICC. As always, please feel free to leave your questions, comments and suggestions in the comments box below. Thank you and hope to see you again soon.